It really is that relationship that was um, brought together through treaties between First Nations people and non-First Nations people through the Crown, the British Crown. And in, if we're talking about the number of treaties in 1871, um, and it was really uh, an understanding or an agreement of how we were going to share these lands. Mm. And what came out of um, that time period was a couple of things. One is the First Nation perspective and, and First Nation history about those treaties is an oral history and an oral understanding and it's passed down through their songs and through their dances and through their languages that embeds what actually happened at that time period. The uh, non-First Nation understanding or the Crown's um, understanding of treaty was uh, reduced to a piece of paper, mm. right, that was to record some of the understandings and agreements. And it's it's understood that not everything made it into the written piece of paper or the, the written treaty, part of the treaty. And so it's it's come to be the challenge that the parties have to get back to that original understanding and what was the understanding, what was agreed to uh, beyond those written pieces of paper. When we think about the treaties again, we go back to this uh, reduction that it's uh, a surrender of land in exchange First Nations people were given certain rights, uh, hunting, fishing, treaty right to education, those types of things. So it's reduced to that, but in fact, it's much broader than that. It's a responsibility on both parties to go back to how do we maintain this coexistence? How do we maintain this respect so that you can be who you are without interference from me? Right, mm. So it's a respect of values, it's a respect of way of life. And if you actually look at the treaty medal, you'll see um, two individuals coming together, shaking hands. And in the background, you'll see teepees, if you look really close. And those teepees represent mm. the, the First Nation way of life would continue. And the so, other side, there's a sun. And then there's a sun, and then there's water, and of course, they're standing on land. Which mm. So the the term of this relationship is for as long as the sun shines, the grass grows and the waters flow. First Nations people said, yeah, you know, there's enough land here for you to come here, um, live off of the land and live the way that you've always lived. So whether you're Caucasian, whether, uh, you know, you're a Muslim, whatever it is, you're, the treaties were set up so that you could come here, um, benefit from the land and be who you are. And so that is to carry on for as long as the sun shines, the grass grows and the waters flow. And um, so it, it applies um, forever. And so those of us that continue to come in and live on this land, that's the benefit, mm. right? So that's your treaty benefit from um, those treaties that were entered 150 years ago. So we're still benefiting. Many of us are still benefiting from that. And we have had some people, um, farmers who have said, I want to give my land back you know, like physically, literally give my land back. Wow, Who do I give it powerful. to, right? That's powerful. So I have a lot of land titles now, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> and they give it to me. No, no. Um, so there, there's that, where people literally say, if, if this is how I receive my land through treaty, then I want to return it, right? Mm -hmm. So there is that portion. The other, though, is looking at access to land, yes. right? And, and I think yes. that's a big part of it. When you... You know, First Nations, the reserves were never meant to be the extent to which First Nations could use the land. It was never meant to be that, but it's become that. Mm. Um, and so I think when we talk about land back, it's having access to the land to be who you are as a First Nation yeah. people. And we have to have that dialogue. How do we uh, share that land again? And it, we have to get away from the ownership concept I own, so I can tell you what to do with it. But it's being able to access the land and use it in the way that First Nations people need in order for First Nations societies to um, prosper, right? And that's going to be different mm. for each as well. I guess one of the biggest obstacles that I still worry about is this fear, mm. right? Fear that somehow we're giving something up as, non -first, uh, as a non-First Nation person or government, that you're giving something up, and yet you're, you're giving so much Right? You're making that space for First Nation people, First Nation societies, First Nation values, which are all wonderful. If you ever get to talk and, and yeah. experience a First Nation um, conversation or a ceremony, it, it's beautiful. And um, so I see hope because I see a lot of uh, First Nation people going back 
um, to understanding who they are and finding their own journeys. And I see a lot of non-First Nation people taking the time to understand as well. Mm. And so that's what gives me hope. Find out what your treaty story is. Say, this is my treaty story. This is how I've benefited mm. from treaty. And then you, you can take it then to the next step and say, this is what I'm going to do to be a good treaty partner.